The opioid crisis is an emergency. responsive is that what you're telling me yes okay we will have okay. a medic and route with you very shortly uh do you okay. know if they're breathing no no you don't know if they're breathing or they are not breathing yeah no, they're not you, breathing you, okay neither are breathing we have about 10 to 12 million americans who have been put on long-term opioids the best available evidence is telling us that they're not doing well. Many have had a decline in their function and their pain has not improved. Maybe their pain has gotten worse. The Center for Disease Control estimates that more than 72,000 Americans died of drug overdoses last year. Now think about it. That's a greater number than all the lives that were lost during the entire decade long Vietnam War. People are literally dying in the street. They're dying in their parents' homes. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the opioid epidemic is fueled by prescription pain medications. Great job. Someone I knew introduced me to heroin. And then before I knew it, it was like, it was to where if I didn't have it, I felt like I was going to die. Heroin is stronger than any human tie. It is stronger than any compelling argument. It is stronger than a religious belief. It is the devil incarnate. There's a true epidemic sweeping America, striking without warning. On a public bus outside of Philadelphia, on a street in Detroit. Opioids pushing thousands of Americans to the brink of death, playing out on social media. People having to be revived, even by their own children. And the heartbreaking results, an innocent little boy dead. A 10-year-old boy is being called the youngest victim of Florida's opioid crisis. And little girls like Liliana in New Hampshire, he was driving on the bus and he got unconscious. And what, how come? What did he do? He was smoking heroin. Now without a father. I would wake up in the morning and, and uh, take four pills and snort two. Uh, that's just to get out of bed. Opioid addiction is reaching epidemic levels. For one week, Nightline partnered with our affiliate stations across the country. It's an evil beast that's been led upon this earth. We're with first responders. Wake up. The DEA. They're getting ready to go in. Victims and their parents. She was gone. Our daughter, she was gone. As they struggle to get a handle on the deadliest drug crisis in American history. You guys just hang on. We begin in Phoenix, where we're out with the DEA and the Tempe police. The vehicle was on the move. Trying to take down an underground network of drug dealers, allegedly with ties to the Sinaloa cartel. This week, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released findings showing a record 72,000 drug overdose deaths in 2017. That's a 13% rise since President Trump declared the opioid crisis a national public health emergency. Opioid addiction affects people from all walks of life, even our greatest athletes. A new documentary, Kissed by God, profiles surfing legend Andy Irons, who died in 2010 after battling both mental illness and opioid addiction. NewsHour Weekend's Megan Thompson recently sat down with Steve Jones, one of the film's directors. You ever heard of being kissed by God? Because it's pretty much what it is. For those 10, 3, 2, 1 second, it's like God came down and gave you a kiss, and then you just chase that the whole rest of your life, trying to get that first wave or the first barrel or that first turn. 
The documentary, Andy Irons, Kissed by God, tells the story of one of the world's most talented and famous competitive surfers. You watched him surf, it was so explosive and unpredictable and so totally competitive. Irons initially came in dead last on his first world tour in 1999, only to make a comeback and win three world titles back to back. Andy Irons, your last tour, a perfect 10. Irons self-medicated with alcohol and drugs, made easier by the lifestyle of partying that surrounded him. He eventually developed an addiction. You know, when he was smoking weed when he was younger, he'd smoke a lot of weed. And then if it wasn't a lot, if it wasn't weed, you know, then drinking, a lot of drinking. You're doing coke, a lot of coke and drinking. A massive archive of never before seen footage and in-depth interviews with friends and family helped tell the story of Iron's incredible highs and debilitating lows, including episodes of paranoia. He got to the place where we were staying, he got in there, he closed up the curtains. He says, uh, they're out there, they're everywhere, we don't know who they were. Doors shut, windows shaped, drapes down, they're following me like, like out of the movies. He like went off the deep end. Irons eventually became addicted to opioids and heroin. The pill runs a hard one to kick and that's the one that grabbed a hold of my brother, grabbed a hold of a lot of us. It took down a whole bunch of people. That seemed like that was the beginning of the end for that big run that my brother had.